Hello, hello. Oh, wow. Hello, hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, I'm going to do this. Good afternoon, we see. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Vivian. Good afternoon, Stephanie, Alyssa, Michaela, Mark, Catherine with a Y. And now, um, And good afternoon, Alyssa. Good afternoon, Charlie. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Vivian. Good afternoon, Stephanie. Hello and good afternoon, we she. Good afternoon, Mark and everyone. Good afternoon, Jay Lynn. Uh, good afternoon, Pro oh, how that? that's weird. Okay. Good afternoon, direct. Uh, good afternoon, Catherine with an I. Good hello, Michaela with a okay. I don't know about Jared and the sandwich. Okay, good afternoon, people that are having Wi-Fi issues, which I totally understand. Hello, uh, Celine. Hello. Oh, that's wow. That's interesting, Nicholas. Good afternoon, Nicholas. Okay, that's cool. Okay, we'll, we'll get rolling because we are because you know we've got this thing coming up. Um, what was I going to say? But it's good to see. I appreciate seeing physically, visually, Vivian and Andrew and we she. Um, and it was weird. Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna. Okay, um, um, so here's the deal. Um, so we've got this cerebral get together tomorrow night. Just to be clear, again, it'll be posted tomorrow night, no later than eight p.m. It'll probably be a little bit earlier. I'm shooting for earlier. It's not. If it comes out earlier, it's not meant to surprise you. It's meant to give you more time. I'm just saying the latest it would come out is eight p.m. It's due back at uh 12 15 on monday which is the beginning of your class um again just to be clear and the rest of this period one way or another we're just we're just going to try to continue to prepare ourselves for it or help each other or review or answer questions Mo a lot of this period i want to just answer direct questions of yours in fact let me warn you of that right now and i'm not trying to be all serious but i am just trying to be clear um um again i'm gonna make some announcements about this exam again or just try to clarify things again uh, the exam is posted tomorrow night again it's due back monday i'll remind you of a couple of details or expectations um but just but just and there are some things i want to bring to your attention but but definitely this period is an opportunity for you to ask questions particularly about the practice exam or about expectations um the more questions i can answer the better the more concise or specific or specific they are the better so i'm kind of saying this right now to give you a little chance to think or to get yourselves together like i am going to give you time where i'm literally just going to sit there and be like what are the questions okay and and i think you also all know what could happen if you don't take a moment to think about it or to leak leaf through your practice exam or any of the solutions that I've posted or said, um, you know, what can happen is one person might ask one question and then I start talking for like 20 minutes and then you never get to ask your question. So what I'm saying is don't be shy and put things in the chat. Even while I'm talking, put your question in the chat. It'll redirect me. If I feel like there's no questions out there, I'm gonna overdo it on one question. So you, I think you know what I'm saying. So please err on the side of asking. If I feel like it's not a legitimate question or I feel like I can't answer it, I, I won't. And I'll like politely somehow make that clear. But don't, you know, let me make the judgment. Don't you make the judgment, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and I will say, is there such thing as a not fair question or a not cool question the day before an exam? Well, well, certainly one thing I don't want to do today, again, I mean, I, I want, I want, I really want to answer whatever your things are. That's the main thing. So I don't want to be efficient about that. So what I don't want to do this period, I will admit this. I don't want it to be a negotiating period, if you know what I mean. Like I'm already uncomfortable enough with exams, and I know some of you are. It's already something, you know, I'm trying to make as unstressful as possible, but it's not the day to like start changing rules or changing expectations or surprising other people in the room or something so today it's so so please don't if you've got actual concerns 
about the expectations or how it works or like if you or complaints or something please give them to me privately or if you have a personal issue we'll work it out personally but okay but like let's not throw people off today and start like changing how we're going to do this that's okay so that's number one um 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 um, um wait, what's that? i'm going to say one last so again please start in your head start tuning me out and start preparing what you might ask today and what kind of question i'm looking for honestly the real kind of question i'm looking for and it is like okay in the practice exam on page four i was trying to do this but i got stuck here blah like should i use sign here or should i use cosine here or in the practice exam on page three, uh, like you posted a solution, but I don't understand how you did step A or so, like something like that is what I'm looking for today. Okay. I'm also not looking for, can you teach me waves? Like if it's a really big, broad, open, vague question like that, I probably can't do that today. And if I try, then I'm not going to answer anybody else's question um, and you're going to get bored. Um, um, Oh, there was a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, I guess also last thing, just to protect myself, I get I'm kind of, I think this should be fine for everybody. And I think a lot of you know that, it. you know, I think you know from 203 that things should just work out fine if you try and have integrity and all of that. So I'm not trying to make this more annoying than it already is. Um, but as you can see, it always gets me a little bit annoyed, these you know, I'd rather just do physics with you than do grades with you. I think that's kind of clear. Um, so on that too, let's not spend today talking about how the grades are done or what grades I still have to give you and stuff. I know that's the case, but th there's nothing to be done about it today. So let's just focus on this material today. Okay, so last thing, last couple of reminders. Uh, you know, everything I ever do in your class, in, your, in this section, sorry, let me just switch the thing. Anything I ever do in this section or the 305 section, all of that, of course, gets taped, videoed, and then you can always re-watch those videos from either class. And you know, if you're fuzzy on some of the material, I suggest maybe you do that. But the third section that I meet in person, you know, they can watch all your videos, but they don't get videoed and you can't watch them. Um, but you're all having the same, to be clear, you're all having the same exam and it's all due it's all coming out at the same time and all due at the same time. Like all three section exams are due the moment your class begins um, next Monday. Oh, I'll look in the chat in a second. I see there are things in the chat. I'm sorry. I'll look in the chat in a second. Um, um, so what I want to say is yesterday in their double period class, I think actually was very productive. And there were some things I did right at the end that I just want to at least give you the option of seeing in this class since there's no video for you to see of theirs. So I'll name what those things are. And then you'll decide when it's sort of question time, whether it's worth your seeing or whether you think you're already clear on them or not. Um, mostly with them, I went over question five, just like I did with you uh, Monday. And I, you know, I think that's been productive for everybody. And I, I would definitely urge you to keep that, that material. But with them, I also sort of went into question four and said some things, which I'm happy to do with you guys, if that's what you decide. Um, but what this, what this reminds me to say to everybody before we get going, let me just remind you again, especially given that I know I've been spotty with the getting back the graded more than spotty with giving you back feedback on how you do the homework. So you could rightfully be nervous about what I'm looking for when you go into this exam and stuff. The deal again to all of you, the deal is you've got five days to do an exam that will look very similar to the practice exam, very similar, but not identical, right? Where it will be identical is any place that ever yet seen any kind of solution. I can tell you that, right? For example, question four, okay? Question four, I'll talk some things about, I'll say some things. Sorry, someone's here. Sorry, 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 I can't even get, how do I get? Sorry. Okay, question four or part or whatever, I said some things to the class yesterday that I think are productive. I'm happy to say them to you if you want to hear them and or you can talk to them. Um, but I've never like really written down really a solution to part four. And it is a very open ended kind of question. It's a little bit more room for you to sort of give a 
a personal expansive answer. Therefore, I think it's, it's funny. Oh, okay, oh, wait, 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 I'm sort of looking at the chat. Wait, I, I will look back at the chat again in a second. Let me just finish this thought in my head. Um, uh, part four, you could pretty much rest assured that that will be asked exactly the way it's asked in your actual exam. I mean, I don't really need to change that question because I haven't said enough about it for, you know, for that to be a problem. The other questions where I've said more specifics, I'll change some specifics. So, so be careful and look for some specific changes when you get the actual exam. Don't just do, don't just copy your old solutions verbatim. Um, but that said, Please remember, I'm just going to say this sort of for the last time, especially because I know there might be some vagueness or what am I looking for? When you get the exam, spend five days. You can and almost should. You can spend five days going all over YouTube um, or going all over Khan Academy or going all over three blue, one brown. You can and even more ideally should spend five days talking with one another. Like really, really. I. It's understood that you can use whatever resource you want, including the solutions, of course, to the practice exam. You can do whatever you want to finally put this all this material together in the five days. You can consider this posted exam almost like a research paper or something like that, where your responsibility is to do whatever you can in the world to be able to ha ultimately have comprehension of full solutions to the problems in the exam. But remember that when you go to write it, and I, when you go to write down a final copy, and I definitely suggest that you do drafts first, or at least drafts of certain parts first. When you go to write a final copy on blank white sheets of paper that you're gonna treat as a blue book, right? Like in the final analysis before Monday, you're gonna take a bunch of white sheets of paper, I mean, blank sheets of paper, you're going to treat them as though they were a blue book. In those pieces of paper, you're going to make it totally ex without copying and pasting, without putting my questions like explicitly in. You're going to make it absolutely explicit what question you're asking, uh, answering at any given time, like Roman numeral one, part A, whatever. You're going to make the question totally clear, i.e. WIQ, i.e. step two of the five-step method, i.e. the five-step method that I have right here on the whiteboard to remind you or whatever, you're going to make the question super clear to me, but you're also going to make it clear to me that the question is clear to you. And that's why you're not going to copy and paste it. Like from my documents, you're going to give me your handwriting, your version, your distilled words, whatever, your style of what the actual question is. And then you're going to give a full solution to that question using, you know, you base using the five-step method, whether you like literally label it as such or not. Um, and you're going to consider every one of these problems a proof, an opportunity to do proof, a proof not only of the answer to the question. Oh, you are good. Oh, oh, good question. Okay. And I told you, these are great questions in the chat. I will shut up in a second and I will answer these questions in the chat. I see them. I'm just not. Okay. But you're going to consider each, don't consider it question answer. Consider it problem proof or problem derivation or problem full solution. And what are you proving in each problem? You're proving the answer for sure. You're proving why the answer is the answer, but you're proving to me that you understand the proof that Cool. Okay. That's, but really, that is your goal. Think of it as a project. Think of it as a presentation, if you like. Think of it as a mini poster session that's on paper. Just remember what, and use the five step method as your guide for sure. But really, really, you're ju just please remember that I'm saying, I'm saying it's not too late to learn this physics now. It's not too late to learn the physics in the middle of the freaking exam. Like I'm saying a lot of things that would sometimes be considered cheating are totally not cheating here. I want you to know the physics by any method possible. But remember, I know that. Like, I'm going to get a document from you where I know that you know the answers and have all the answers, like, right in front of you somehow, or will have hopefully spoken to all of your friends 
hopefully maybe even in other sections as well. So you can get all the, right? And so your job is to show me at the end of the day that having assimilated all that, you actually have found a way to show me that you get it, right? That's the hardest part in a way is actually show me that you get it. That means, go, you know, and yeah, okay. I think you get it. I think you get what I said, but that's your job. Is make, so make it as colorful or as artistic or as detail, whatever your style of thinking is, go to town on that style of thinking. Like really, I'm not, and some of you are very funny. Like actually most of you are very, very funny. Be funny if you want. Don't be funny to compensate for lack of understand. Don't throw jokes in instead of, like that's a cheap thing to do. And I'll see, but wherever you really feel relaxed with the material, get relaxed with it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I think you know what I'm saying. I don't mean to over, but I just want to remind you all that but this also means the reverse is true. If you're t if you're a very honest person and a moral person, which most of you are, and you, no, I think I'm not. Okay, I'm going to totally go to the chat in a second. But uh, look, I'm I'm speaking right now to be like if the more confident you are that you get it, show your confidence by going extra crazy. But those of you who are not confident, okay, or attentive, or still worrying, like like that you're honest and you're everybody's helping you, and you're, but you're still like creaky with your understanding. Believe me, believe me, I can relate to that. Please believe me that I can relate to a very a feeling of a very tentative grasp on material, even like while I'm saying, or, or being very stressed out by it. As, as you can see, I hope I could be that person that's like, ah, I get he's giving this is even worse because he's giving me every opportunity to do this, like and making it as like kind of generous as possible. And I still don't quite get it. And now, like I'm really, now I even writing the answers isn't good enough. Now he wants a freaking diorama too. Oh my God. No, if you're very tentative in your understanding and you also don't feel like, you know, doing cuneiform or whatever, then, then what I'm really telling you, whoever you are is just be as honest be super honest about your thought process as possible. For example, if there's something that you get now, kind of, you think you get it. You think you finally maybe get it, but you really have been struggling. You've really been struggling and you really, what you're much more in touch with is the extent to which you don't get it. Write about that. I'm not even kidding. Those of you, wherever you're insecure about this, I don't mean give me your emotional therapy. I don't mean say, and then this reminds me of when my mother used to hold me upside down in the rocking chair. Like, I don't mean that, but I mean, like if, if you write something like, and then A equals D two X DT squared, you can literally say after that, I'm not sure where this came from. I don't know if this is a definition or if this is always true. I don't know why we're using it. You can say things like that. You can like introduce your own chat function into the exam if you want, like sidebar, make comments as you go of what is clear to you and what's not clear, something. Just give me the, make it as clear as possible that this is your brain, your mind, your soul being dumped onto the page by the time you get to the page. That's your job. It's a project, okay, to every, right? And the less secure you are, the more you can take advantage of what I'm saying by just being authentic and being moral and being self-aware about it. And the more secure you are, the more you can show um, your individual wisdom that you gained. I'm serious. There should be a way for each one of you to get an A on this if you actually are thorough and fearless. I shouldn't say fearless. If you are thorough, each one of you in a different way should be able to show a whole different like relationship to this material. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop the yammer. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to look at the chat. Wait, is it? But I think I, hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm gonna look in the chat. I'm gonna look in the chat now. Wait, hold on a second. But I appreciate you listening to all this. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going through the chat. These are good questions. I mean, and if I look for it, some of them are hard. Um, Yeah, okay, okay. The, I'm gonna read a question out loud that's in the private chat. It's a very, it is a legitimate question, but it is a tricky question. So I'm gonna read it out loud. And I have to read it out loud in the interest of fairness uh, to everybody. I'm not gonna read the name of the person. I know that you can't exactly answer if our answers are correct, 
but can we send it to you to make sure that what we wrote fits your five-step rule or no? Okay, that raises a very interesting, that, that, that raises an important thing. Um, so that's, so I totally hear how this person gets it and gets like the whole thing and gets the nuance. I have to ultimately say no to that question, but I'm saying this to everybody. And there's a reason I read it out loud. Um, certainly, as of tonight, anybody could still send me, I mean, you don't want to send me long, long things, but you could still send me short things as of tonight that came from the practice exam or something that asks me, is this what you mean by the five-step rule? Or am I doing this basically right? Or something like, or if I did this on the actual exam, like, would this basically work? And I won't, and I, and, and again, and I won't be able to do perfectly with that. But if anybody sent me anything like that tonight, I would do something with it. And I certainly wouldn't criticize anybody for sending it to me. Okay. Um, once the exam actually starts, like as of tomorrow night, I'm glad this person's raising this question because this has sort of come up in the past. I, I want to remind you two things. You could still ask me questions through tonight and whatever. And even if I'm a little bit late in getting back to you, forgive me, but I will. Once the exam starts, the one resource you really can't use is me. And even for a thing like that, even though I get what that person's saying, once the exam starts, I'm not going to answer questions about the material. And the reason is just that I've tried to be available for that in the past. And that's the one thing that ends up getting to be unfair to other people in the class. Because some people have already broken major ice with me in their some people have already broken the ice and know how to text me or email me and feel comfortable doing that. And some people just don't. And, that, and that's totally fine. Like that's the, but that's not like a physics distinction. That's a social distinction. And I, I have found in the past, I'm, as you all know, I'm very, it's very hard once someone asks me a question for me not to say something about it. And so I don't want to make this a thing where the people that feel the most comfortable reaching out to me then end up having a huge advantage in the middle of the exam. So I'm going to say once the exam starts, the only way you, you're still allowed to reach to each other, you know, and you can reach out to your aunt and uncle, like, you know, who know physics or whatever. You, I won't really answer questions about the exam once it starts, except for one thing, which is that if you start, any of you start seeing that there's a time problem, and I, I hate to sound like this again, but if any of you start detecting that something may happen where you're not going to hand it in Monday at 1215, something in your family, something in a sickness, something blah, 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 then definitely text me. Or, yeah, definitely text me then and give me a heads up and we'll talk about it. Like I, I'm not even, if it's a personal thing, you might just say it's a personal thing and I may not ask you any questions. I'm definitely not going to ask for doctor's notes. It's not a matter of that. I might end up being very, very flexible with anybody as an individual. If you have an individual situation, I may not necessarily need to know what it is in order for me to be flexible. I'll be flexible based on how you handle it with me, not based on what your personal details are, okay? So, if you, so what I'm saying is the one reason you should communicate with me once the exam starts is if you start detecting that there's gonna be a time problem, things are gonna come in, reach out to me. The worst thing that can happen is I might say, I'm not comfortable with, or something, okay? But, that makes me feel you, funny. yeah, I might say, thank you. I might say, mm, that makes me feel funny inside, much like whatever this thing is to my face right now. Um, I might say that, but that's the worst thing. I would not, if anybody reaches out to me for saying there's gonna be a time issue, that is a much, that is a good idea and you should do it, and I may be very flexible and I won't get personal with you and I won't evaluate your reasons. I'll much more just evaluate how you're handling with me. And that, and I'm saying that right now because the one thing I have to remind everybody and then I'll get back to the chat. As, as spotty as I am with the homework and all that in both directions, and I am not spotty about deadlines with the exam. But the one thing that will raise a really big red flag that is of concern and has led to consequences in the past surprising consequences is if when 12 15 comes on monday if some exam just shows up an hour later or 15 minutes later or a day later and i had no warning that that was going to happen and there was no even acknowledgement that that's like a little weird if someone just turns an exam feeling like oh yeah around he's a loose guy whatever here's my exam that is the one thing like that's the person who's then going to save the curve for everybody else to be totally obnoxiously blunt about it 
Like, I mean, that's the one person who's going to get the bad grade that then makes me feel okay about everybody else getting a good grade. Like, don't be that person. Don't be the person that just sends a late exam and just, or thinks I'm not going to see or notice the timestamp on it or something. So if you detect any time crunch coming, let me know. The work, even if it comes to, and I'm going to move on in a second, to, but okay, let me wrap, let me back up. The chat question that I read out loud is a very fair question. I don't want to even remotely joke about it. It's a very fair question. But sadly, the answer is kind of no, because I've tried in the past to make distinctions like that, to say, I'll answer this kind of question, but not that. And it gets gross. It gets unfair. So I'm really not going to be available to answer questions once the exam is going, except about like, about like, like, I mean, I won't look at your work. Let me put it that way. I get why, but you can't send me work in the middle of the exam and expect me to give feedback on it. That's an unfair advantage to other people. But certainly you can add, you could send me a question during the exam that either says I'm detecting there's going to be a time problem. Even if it's just like, I'm really having struggles. I'm really having struggles. I don't know that I'm going to make it by Monday, 12, 15. Like, look, maybe I'll make a, maybe I'll say to you, all right, listen, I'll sell you an extension of, of an hour for five points or something like that could happen. I won't criticize you. But just give me updates if you think there's going to be a problem. And yes, back to the direct chat person, you could write me a question in the exam, like in the five-step method, when you say PAW, like, is that where I should put numerical calculations? You can do something like that. I'll answer a question like that. I just won't look at anybody's work and evaluate it once the exam's going, because that gets to, okay, so I'm overdoing this, but hopefully that's clear. But again, it, this is the one thing you cannot just be nonchalantly late without warning. That will, I, I, I will think like, oh my God, this person, I, I'll, just, I'll view that as like sort of disrespect of, of the whole system, whatever. Okay, 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 okay. I'm um, going on, I hope that answer is clear. I'm hooking. Oh, oh, the FPD and hook on a hook. Oh yeah, I'm happy to go to that. I'm just looking at the time. That's a very concrete, so I see Nicholas's question. That's a good question, example of a good concrete question. Let me, I'm definitely going to go to that. Let me just see, let me evaluate what the other questions are. But at worst, if I don't, well, just remind me, I do want to get to that FBD on the hook on a hook. Hold on one second. Um, <laughs> I love the Rainbow Road. My favorite Mario music actually is the, the, well, anyway, whatever. I do love Rainbow Road. Okay, wait, can you, oh yeah, and then Stephanie, and I'm sorry, I don't mean, to, the jokes are funny, but I'm just trying to get to the, um, Stephanie, really good question. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. No, you, you, when I say white sheets of paper, I kind of mean that as a metaphor. Yeah, you can do it electronically. You can do it electronically. I think for a lot of people, that's harder. But no, no, you definitely can. You absolutely can do it electronically. I just assume that people that, yeah, I'm just want to make clear that you don't have to, for one thing, you definitely can do it out on white pieces of paper and then scan it in. You can do it electronically. Just be very careful, just make sure. And yeah, for some of you, that will make it look a lot better and it will make it a lot more thorough. Just please, again, make sure if you do it electronically, any and all of you, just please, I'm still saying white blank pieces of paper, meaning don't try to do your test right in, don't like scan my exam in and then like start typing into that or something. Um, certainly not on those question pages, you, you know what, I, but yeah, you can do it electronically and just make, why am I stuttering on this? Sometimes people do things electronically in a way that starts looking very sus, if I may say, like, do it electronically, but make go, if you're going to do it electronically, go a little bit of an extra length to make it absolutely clear to me that it's you that did it electronically, that you didn't get it from like Chegg or whatever. I mean, I'm just saying that, like, there's no obvious reason. I mean, it's not that I just make it, just make sure that it doesn't somehow look like you elect, got an electronic document from somewhere else. But yes, you could totally do it electronically. And again, with these questions are sensitive enough, please give me feedback in the chat. I'm going, I'm going to try to speed up because I know I'm taking too long with the questions, but do please try to give me feedback in the chat of like, yes, you answered it or or no, you didn't or whatever, but okay. Cuneiform, that's hilarious. No, and I'll tell you, no, okay, here's the thing. I know Nicholas is joking sort of because he said LOL and I read the dictionary, but like, I'm not going to regret, and Nicholas is funny. Like, let's face it. I mean, clear, 
And maybe he was part of one, one of the people in my mind when I said that. I'm not going to look, and I've been funny occasionally in my life too, but I'll tell you, there's times when humor served me very well. And there's times that it didn't. Humor serves me very, very well when it shows that I'm relaxed with what's going on and it puts the other person at ease. Humor does not serve me well when I use it as a crutch or I use it as a distraction or I use it like to, to divert someone's attention from what I really don't know it to be going on, right? Totally, I, if your exam is hilarious and I know some of you are capable of giving me a hilarious exam, oh my God, it'll make it easier to grade. And I wanna say that too. Look, we all know that grading is not my strong suit and that puts you at a disadvantage. So also just bear that in the back of your mind. You want to give me a document that just sort of leaps out and presents itself as an A that just makes it easier for me to want to open it, easier for me, faster for me to go through it. You want me to do as little work as possible to give you an A to, to mark the A that you deserve. And I'm serious about this. So if you have this exam that's colorful, and if you made a cartoon out of everything, but I looked, I'm not really encouraging that, but like if your exam was, it was like manifestly full of accurate physics, and self-aware humor about the physics. Like only someone that really knows physics could do that. And it would make, it would be super easy to grade and it'd be super fun and it'd be a super A. If, if you hand me a document that's like a bunch of jokes instead of the physics, you know, just know that that's pretty transparent. Obviously I can tell that, so just don't do that. Um, but no, I won't regret a funny exam, I really. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, right, okay. And like, okay. And like a large incompatible, right? We don't want, don't give me a large incompatible file. I know that's a joke too, but um, okay. And even, okay, just even between you guys, also just note that, should I say this? No, I probably shouldn't. All right, I'll keep going along. But, uh, uh, right, no, you have, Okay, and I'm gonna go, and even though, look, there are even some people in this room, I'm sure right now, especially, look, we're stressed, right? I mean, even I, or especially I, and my job is to lower the stress, not raise it, but if I'm not careful, I can raise people's stresses if I'm not careful. Our job, all of our jobs, is to do as well as we can with as little stress as we can. Like intensity is good, but stress is by definition not, Right. And so just note there are people in this room right now that are appreciating some of the jokes that some of you are making or that I'm making and are not appreciating some of them. Right. We all know if we really think about it, some of the jokes that are made by, let's even say me, help relax people and help people feel like it's going to be OK. And some of the jokes make other people feel like, like, God, can we just get to it? Or, or God, can that person, yeah, like, I know he finds the material all relaxing, but that, that just makes me feel worse. Like, right, you know in your hearts, all of you, that some ways of putting ourselves at ease does put the larger situation at ease, and some of them do the opposite. And I have to be super careful about that, and I fail at it a lot. So I'm just also costing me, like, even in the chat, sometimes the jokes help everybody make it a much better class. Sometimes, of course, to some people in the room, they're like, guys, like, I, I'm glad you can be all cocky, but I can't. Or they're like, guys, you're acting all cocky, but I even know in my heart, you don't even know what you're, you're just being bravado, like whatever. Like sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Try to strike that balance in your own personal exams. Like definitely you would not want to give me an incompatible file. Like I understand that's a joke, but like, you know, there are ways your whole thing could be so funny that it would, in effect, be an incompatible file. And you don't want to do, all right, I'm going to go on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, look, also, let me say again, uh, the five-step method, it's taking me, it, it's my best version of an example just like all of this, even my solutions are examples to you of what would constitute really good solutions. The five-step method is a version, it's an example of how to get smarter by allowing yourself to be stupider, right? It's an, you know, it is not a literal, if you can find another way to cover all the bases of a proper solution, I mean, Einstein didn't use the five-step method, right? I mean, like, obviously there's ways of doing physics that aren't literally my five-step method. And if you can, but it's a guide for people to fall back on if they're feeling like they don't know what to do next or this or that. If you really can rock the thing in your own way, 
you know what I'm saying. Okay, to everybody, I'm trying to give as many examples as I can of how to rock a physics solution. I do think the five-step method is among the safest. And I think if you look at it for five seconds, it's really not, it's just labels for things that you probably are already doing, honestly. It's like a, think of it more, think of the five-step method as more of like a check, um, what do you call it? Uh, yes, a checklist, but a, um, a, uh, a rubric. It, Think of the five-step method is, is not something I'm trying to force you to now do for the first time in your life. It's how I grade. Think of it that it's just like what I'm looking for when I go down the grade. So just ask yourself as you're going, did I actually cover these things? And whether you call them steps or not, but all right. Blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a fair, very, if you don't understand the way I worded something, you could definitely, okay. Can you ask for a rephrase? One thing is, and I know I'm looking at the time. Focus. Um, one thing about the way I word things, I mean, that's an interesting, fair point. Um, I'm talking a lot right now, but one thing I would encourage, I'm not going to change the wording very much in the actual exam. I'm going to change numerical details in this and that. So one thing is, if there's any wording that's throwing you off, I would please ask you to either bring it to my attention in this, like flip through the practice now and either bring it to my attention here or tonight you or tomorrow. By the way, I keep saying tonight. You still also have all tomorrow before I post this thing. So this question, I think it's in the public chat. Yeah, very, very fair that Gabrielle is talking about my wording. Fair on a thousand levels. I mean, especially, I mean, even if English words are all of our first languages, like it's not at all clear that it's mine the way I use it sometimes, but it's not even for some of us. So it's very fair to be like thrown by my wording. But I would just say to everybody, the wording's not going to change that much from today to tomorrow. So please look this is your opportunity today and tomorrow to look for places where the wording is throwing you and let me know in advance. That's the best thing I can say. Uh, and again, that gets into subtle. Look, the main thing of what you can't text me once the exam starts, this is to everybody, what you can't text me once the exam starts is something about your work. Okay, if I got a text from someone that says, like, can you remind me, is it due at 12.15 or 12.20? Or if I got a text from someone that said, like, wait, um, uh, oh, if I got a text from someone that said, is it possible you made an, this question? Oh, like we, sorry, like somebody in direct chat once pointed out an error that I had in the actual question of part, like I, there actually was an error in one of the questions of this practice exam, which I've talked about, but I've never actually corrected in the document where like literally the word literally said something right, said cosine, but there was no cosine. If, if you catch something like that, really, of course, you if you think there's a mistake or something weird, you can text me that once the exam's happening. I'm just, what you really can't do is text anything about your work or ask me to help you with your work. Yes, you can text me something about if you think something in the exam is possibly an error or you wanna make sure you understand what I'm asking. I, yeah, you could, yes, I mean that, I'd rather get that all out of the way in the next two days. That's kind of why we have a practice exam. But for sure, if you think something in the wording is such that it might actually you know, either be an error or lead to major misunderstanding. And if I can't answer, I can't answer. I'm just saying I am not going to help people with their work during the exam. I'm not going to say if something's good or bad. Like that's too subtle a distinction for me to be able to navigate. Um, okay, now. Right. If you send things tonight, okay, so I'm back to Nicholas thing. And I want to get so far the most concrete, like physics-y thing in all of this is the pendulum free body diagram question. I want to make sure not to neglect that. In fact, I'm going to warn you, but these are good questions. So this is what I want. So I don't think we have to stop. But maybe someone, if it becomes 115, if it becomes 115 and I still haven't answered the free body question, the free body, could someone and if I'm really far behind in the chat, maybe someone yell at me or something like with voice. Okay, because I still want to answer that. But um, the thing that Nick, I think Nicholas is asking publicly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, if if someone sends me something tonight or tomorrow for me to make an overview and just a general, like to say, like, am I doing the five step method right? Is this basically what you're looking for? I first of all, that won't be a violation. If you do that, it's definitely not a violation. It won't piss me off or something. And I will try. I don't know how specific I'll be about it. I'm not sure that I'll like literally grade it and say this would be a 97 or something. 
But yeah, I can give an impressionistic response to something that anybody sends me tonight or tomorrow. I could give an impressionistic response of like, yes, that's what I mean by the five step method, or yes, you have the basic idea, or, or I'll say something like, well, I think you need more in step. I'll try to do that. And even if I do, don't do perfectly helpful with it, I certainly won't consider it improper for you to try and ask me. Uh, oddly, it would still probably be better by text than by email, but yeah, that's okay. Um, if that also reminded me of another important thing. Hold on one second. There was another thing about texting email and formatting. I can't remember, but okay. Um, oh yeah, okay. Gabrielle's joke is funny, but making it looking super, but I hope it's a joke. Like also think, you know, I fly every Monday night or most Monday nights now I get on an airplane, right? To come to New York and all that. And I'm bringing it up for this quick, well, maybe for a couple of reasons. One, you know, at the security, at security and stuff, there are still people to this day that at security, checkpoints in airports will like make jokes about like like the person will be looking do you have any liquids in your bag and the person will be like well i don't have any liquids except for that nitrogen that i'm using for a bomb ha 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 or so, like and it's such a bad idea to do that right like even when it's super witty it's such a bad idea and i want to say like i know gabrielle's joking now so get it out now if you need to, but you don't want to take risks. Like don't jokingly make your exam look super, like don't take a risk like that with your, uh, you know, uh, well, I think you know the answer to that. Like don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> this is not the, you get it. Um, okay, okay. Oh, thank you, thank I mean, thank you, Stephanie, cool, okay. Thank, oh no, not at all. Okay, cool. Uh, right. Well, yeah. No, it's true. If you literally can make a good joke about a topic, you really do. No, it's true. Humor in some sense is the high, reveals the highest form. It, look, if you can make a legitimate joke about a topic, it actually shows two things. It shows that you understand the topic and it shows that you understand your relationship to the topic, which is really what I'm asking everybody to submit here. I don't want to like spend this whole time talking, analyzing jokes, but we're tr I, what I'm trying to get across to all of you, and this is unusual, that's why I talk about it. This is not the way physics, I know this is not the way you're used to a science class, or I don't think, I, I, I don't know. But like, I'm really trying to stress that the purpose of this exam, you got to think of this exam more as a project than an exam in a way. And that that should be a good thing, whether you feel strong about it or you feel weak about it. What I'm really trying, this is where all the game turns and all of that come into play. There are those of you who are religious about the game turns, and I know that, and I appreciate it. And there, I mean, there are some of you who like never say anything in class or, or whatever, and then totally like get things across in the game terms. And, and, and I mean, there are those of you who think, who think in your minds that you don't get the physics. But you're showing me in the game terms how authentically you are managing the physics. And that's what I want to see on the exam. This is not, we're not trying to find out like which one of us gets a Nobel Prize because none of us are getting a Nobel Prize, definitely including me. It's not about that. This, you're not getting graded on physics discovery. You're getting graded on physics education. How much physics did you learn? How much, how well did you do in this class, right? That's what this is about. So that means every single one of you, even those of you who feel like you understand the least, think of it, if nothing else, you think of this exam as I'm not trying to find out how much you know, I'm trying to find out how much you've grown in your management of this material. Okay, so every single one of you can get an A, no matter what level you think you're operating on, as long as you think your intellectual derivative ha has been positive and high, don't worry about your intellectual position. And actually, I've never said that before, but I could not, be, I am not joking at all. Like, think of this exam as not, it's not testing where you are in physics, it is testing how steeply you're climbing in physics. And, and that, and more you can show me that you're getting somewhere, the more you can honestly convey your relationship to the material, that the more you're gonna get an A.
It's that, and there's a million different ways to do that. And I'm telling you right now, all of you with your personalities, and I mean this seriously, and whether it's the jokes or the pictures that some people send me in the game turns or the, or the weird things in text that some people send me, like I know each one of you has a personality and has an internal dialogue with this physics that is very colorful and musical. I mean, like metaphorically or not. And that's what I want, just bring it across in your exam. Make it easy to make it a document that I just want to open. Be like, oh wow, cool, that's that person. And like, and the less I have to like, right? Because again, I know that you know that I know, and you know the answers already. So it's not about that. It's about how you get to the answers, right? So all of you, okay, okay. But I, I'm, the reason I'm screaming now because I'm realizing again, even in the chat, see, even in the chat. This is a little bit becoming like a discussion among certain groups who feel a certain type of comfort level. I mean, not, not a perk, but a certain type. And already they at least are comfortable with the kind of tricks they know to use when they are comfortable or not. And others of us in the room are still trying to figure out what do I do when I'm not comfortable or whatever. I want you all to know the exam is designed, is meant, this type of exam is meant to bring all of you to the A level. Like literally, and I also want you to know that I've been all of you before. I'm only acting the way I act now because now I'm the professor and now I'm in the comfort zone, but I'm not usually and wasn't when I was learning this stuff. So really, um, uh, okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Right, no, I'm, right. And also, get, I, I'm looking at the direct chat. Yeah, there's stress. So I, I, I want you to know there's still, the, the, the three words that I hate the most in the English language when they're put together, the thing I live in fear of ever hearing from anybody in any context, and the thing that the thing I always live in abject fear of, especially in academics, is anybody even remotely implying to me it's too late. I'm here to tell you it's not. I don't care who you are. I do care who you are, but I'm saying no matter who you are in this room, and some of you I know better than you think I know you, or I know you better than other people know you or something, there's nobody in this room for whom it's too late. It is not too late. It is never too late to show that you've done something or to do something or to get somewhere, really, okay? That that's again part of the purpose of this exam. It's meant to it does, and that's also for me. Like I'm like very behind on the grading, right? I mean, it's terrible. Like a lot of this is compensation for that. But it is not too late for us all to get something out of all of this, and it's not too late for you to find a voice that works in the exam, even if you think you know very little. Then very very honestly expand and go to town and dissect and reveal and unpack the very little that you know and show the difference between it and stuff that you don't know. I think I mentioned the other day too, you know, literally false is the opposite of true. I think I mentioned this, I'm not, did I mention this? The other? False is the opposite of true. If you know a truth, sorry, if you know something that's true, but you don't know whether it's true or false, that's nowhere near as meaningful or helpful as knowing something false and knowing that it's false. That's equivalent to knowing a truth. So if you know what you don't know, that's knowing something. And it's much better than knowing things and not knowing whether you know them or not. Anyway, okay. I'm gonna, okay, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, all right, well, okay. Well, th that last joke is a little bit like, well, who's, who's doing that? I mean, okay, all right. So the, okay. So the free body diagram thing. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change screens first. Well, okay, actually I'm gonna do it fresh here. Stop, tell me, I'm, so I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna, so, so we still have a half hour, I believe. Um, uh, I'm gonna do, what, no, let me, hold on, let me change the screen. Well, yeah, no, you tell me if this is the right thing here. Um, I'm just going to do this because I don't even offhand. I'm not, I don't even want to. You'll put this wherever it goes in the exam. I think this is for part three. 
maybe someone could tell me in the chat. I think this is for part three. Um, but All right, so first of all, that's my picture, right? That's not the free body diagram. And again, stop me or someone put in the chat if this is not what you're asking about or, or tell me where, I think this is for part three, but that's, okay, that's a picture. I'm doing it for, it's a diagram. It's not a free body diagram, but it's a picture. And why am I doing it? One, so I can show what the labels mean. Like L means the length of the string, M means the mass, the theta. In fact, I should say, I think it's theta not actually, but um, so the labels are there to show what they mean but also really the almost the main purpose of this picture right here this informal picture is to show uh which side like to show where the pendulum is in relation to the vertical axis whether it's on the right or the left um so that when i draw my free body diagram i'm going to make i'm going to use the same orientation you should be able to read my free body diagram in accordance with this like my free body diagram actually would not make any sense without first knowing like which way the thing is going. And honestly, I don't even remember if this is the way it is in the exam. But so this is my informal picture. Now, my free body diagram on the next page. Okay. First of all, this is my pure. Free body diagram. Um, pure meaning I literally just put one vector arrow in the diagram for ev each and every force that's acting on the object on the M on the mass for every force that's acting on the mass I put one vector arrow whose approximate or comparative length qualitatively indicates its comparative size and that's that's qualitative and then whose orientation whose tip and tail orientation indicates its direction and that's pretty rigorous like that's kind of the important part of the free body diagram and that means I'm, I'm drawing an arrow for every force acting on the mass. I am not drawing any arrows for any forces that the mass is doing to anything else. I'm not representing forces that the mass is exerting on the outside world. I'm drawing forces to represent, I mean, I'm drawing arrows to represent forces that are being exerted onto the mass, like for which the mass is the recipient, right? And I'm drawing them in the direction that they are acting on the mass. Like if the mass is being pulled or pushed in a certain direction, that's the direction the arrow is going. Um, so, I'm, so I'm drawing one arrow for every force and I'm not doing anything to the arrows yet in this pure free body diagram. I'm just drawing them as I actually think they're acting in the world. So, you know, according to this picture with the string where it is at that moment. Oh, and, and a free body diagram is a point in time at, a point in space like this is a snapshot so at that moment in time the string it, it is doing what it's doing the string is going like that so the tension in the string is pulling the mass up and to the left 
Also, the planet Earth is underneath the mass, it always is, and it's pulling straight down. And I drew the, I drew the two arrows at pretty definitively different lengths because what I'm saying is I don't, I don't have any active reason to believe or want to say that they're the same size force. Like, I don't think those two forces are equal. I don't have any reason to believe that they are. So I'm definitively making them different sizes. Do I know for a fact that the tension is um, stronger than the weight? That's my guess. But the, the most important thing is they're not equal. Um, now that's the pure free body diagram. Now, I'm going to have to do something with that free body diagram. The whole purpose of a pre, and I'm, I'm looking at the time. Okay. The purpose, that's always what you do first for a pure free body diagram. The purpose of a diagram, the, the purpose The purpose is to is to allow the purpose of the diagram is to identify all the F's, all of which we're going to add up together to get A, right? We the sum of all the forces equals mass times acceleration. So the purpose of the diagram is to get all the forces on the table. The thing is that, that F net equals MA is a vector equation. F net equals MA really means. It really is two or three separate equations at the same time. It means all the forces along this axis added together will produce the acceleration along this axis, while independently yet simultaneously, all the forces added up on this axis will, all the forces acting together will all add up, including minus signs, to produce the acceleration along this axis. And then all the forces acting on it, blah, 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 blah. So. F net equals MA is really a separate equation for each axis. That means we have to choose always to make any free body diagram useful. You have to choose a coordinate system. You have to choose axes, impose them on your situation, and then do take any vectors that are not pointing along those axes and divide them up into components that lie along the axes. Like we. We ultimately want to always turn a pure free body diagram into a component diagram because we ultimately want a diagram that just has arrows along each of what we're calling coordinate axes so that then we can just go to one axis at a time, add up all the arrows on that axis, including minus signs, and do F net equals MA for each axis. So we have to choose axes. This goes back to Galileo and relativity and coordinate systems and everything from physics to, well, all of this goes back to physics 203. But so we want to choose axes. Like if you just had a customary, and, and you have to, so how do we do that? Well, I, okay, so I'm trying not to get too bogged down in this problem, but so I'll just say this. We, this is all the Galileo thing where there's the physics is the same, physics laws are true in any, co any non accelerated coordinate system that we pick. So physics will be true in any coordinate system that we pick, in any set of axes that we pick. But some axes are more convenient and easy to work with than others. So a technique that we do in physics is we always shoot, we tend as a strategy. We want to pick the, any axes will work, but some will work a lot more easily than others. So we always pick axes. We always pick a coordinate system for which our principal axis, our, 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 our first axis that we pick, we always pick one that lies along the direction of expected acceleration. I'll just save it.
Right. 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 We always, and what do I mean by that? I, again, I'm trying to be mindful of the time and I'm watching the chat too, if there's anything, but this is a very fair question and I'm just, yeah, trying to, um, like if a block were just on a table and sliding along back for or a bowling ball or something, we're rolling along the bowling alley floor, we would choose axes like, if the bowling alley, if the bowling ball were like accelerating along a floor or a box or accelerating along a table, we would say x axis, y axis, z axis. We probably wouldn't even need the z axis. And um, and uh, and, then, and we would uh, draw a free body diagram and we would divide up all of our forces along those axes. And, and that would make sense and be straightforward and not require any major thought because um, all we would pick. If we pick this as our x-axis and all the acceleration is happening along this axis, then along this axis, we'd say f net equals ma, and there would be an a, and it wouldn't just be a portion of a, it wouldn't be like a cosine or a sine. And then along any other axis, there wouldn't be any other a. So we'd be able to say all the forces are balanced along the other axes. So we would have, by setting up our axis to line up with acceleration, we automatically know that on the other axes, there's zero acceleration. So that's a zero that we can plug into F net equals MA. It's more information. It gives us immediate fast knowledge about the forces. That's what we tend to do. So then like, for example, in physics 203, if you had an inclined plane, if the thing is sliding down an, on an angle, then we choose the x-axis to line up with the plane because the box is accelerating along that plane. So again, there we'd say, aha, f net equals ma along this, not a cosine or not a sine, just ma. And along the perpendicular, there's no a, so we know the forces are balanced. That's what we do. Well, in a curve, in a circle here, like this pendulum is going in a curve, it, in order for anything, to ever move in a curve, it must accelerate toward the center of the curve, right? To curve is to change direction. To change direction is to change velocity, right? You cannot change direction. If you change direction, you're changing your velocity. If you're changing your direction, you are accelerating. In other words, things don't naturally turn. Newton's first law says things naturally go straight. If they're going to turn, they must be forced into that turn. If they're turning, they're accelerating necessarily. Their, their velocity vector is ch shifting, changing, uh, shifting toward the center of that curve. We call that acceleration centripetal acceleration, right? If something is curving, it is necessarily, definitely accelerating toward the center of that curve. So when anything is curving, we set up our axes to line up with that. I'm saying this. In other words, when any, whenever, and I'm going to, I'm almost done with this. I mean, I think this is the part that the person that Nicholas was asking about. I mean, I think this is the trickiest part of the problem. But my pure free body diagram is indisputable, I think. But because this thing, but now I have to divide into components because the two arrows are not pointing parallel to each other nor perpendicular to each other. They're clearly not in the same coordinate system, those two arrows. So I have to pick a coordinate system. I have to pick axes and then divide arrows up accordingly. The coordinate system I'm going to pick, it's not the only one in the world to pick, but it's the one that will work by far the most conveniently, smoothly, strategically. I'm going to say my principal axis is my centripetal axis, an axis that points along the radius of this curve, i.e. along the string. Then my other axis must always be perpendicular to that, like all axes must be perpendicular. So my other axis is the axis perpendicular to the radius, i.e. the tangent line. Whenever... When we're in a in on a box or on a plane or in some if we're moving straight, we always do like X, Y, Z coordinate axes. When we're moving in a curve, we do centripetal tangential Z, or or you could call it radial tangential. We align the axes to line up with what we know is happening in a curve. So we say.
these are our axes now. You can call them X and Y in your head if you want, but they're not really X and Y because they're actually shifting every moment because this thing is curving. That's the whole point. They're acknowledging that. It's the radial line and the tangent line. So now if we divide up our four, and I'm going to stop this in, we have seven minutes, I'm going to stop this in two minutes. If those are our axes, our coordinate system, then the two fourths, then we, then tension is fine. Then tension is right along the, the centripetal line, but gravity must be broken up into a centripetal component and a tangential component. Right? So gravity is broken up into sine. So one of those two arrows is mg sine and one is cosine. Um, it's kind of like saying that right at this moment, that pendulum bob, right at this moment, it's, it's on a little inclined plane, right? Gravity is pulling it to some extent, like gravity is pulling it straight down, but that means to some extent, it's pulling it along the curve toward toward the bottom of the curve and to some extent it's pulling it it's keeping it on the string it's just like on an inclined plane to some extent gravity is keeping you on the plane and to some extent it's sending you along the plane those are the two components so that's my i'm going to stop there you could tell me in the chat or you could tell me privately later if that helped or not but that's and, and then we do f net equals ma from there on but i think it's in the solutions but that's my free body diagram that's how i got that free body diagram um uh, okay, I'm going to pause for a second. I hope that's helped. But other, I'm looking in the chat. Okay. Um, I'll say, are there other, I don't know if, I don't know if I've lost everybody or not. I'll say this quickly there. So please put other, now I feel like I've scared everyone. I don't know what just happened, but um, I hope that does answer the question. But there's five minutes left. Um, I will say that in the other classes, I talked a little bit about, or not the other classes, in one, if you have friends in section three, I talked to them a little bit about part four. Um, what's the main thing of part four? What I'm looking for in part four of the practice exam, of the exam, is that's where I'm saying, draw a bunch of little oscillators, like a bunch next to each other in a row, and that they're all starting, that they're all identical, but starting at different heights, and show, you know, each one, well, okay, I'll just really quickly say this. For part four, I'm looking for this type of thing. This is the thing I'm talking, getting at in part four, that then when you put these, when you put a whole bunch of oscillators together and capture them in one equation, you ultimately get this. Now I'm doing this very fast right now. I'm just saying this is the basic idea of what I'm talking about in question four, that if you lay out a bunch of oscillators, the equation for each one would look like that. So you put them all together and it looks like this red thing. And then you might want to practice this. It's definitely in your notes, but If you lay out a whole bunch of oscillators, you get that, you get a bunch of equations, you put them all together, you have that one equation of T and X. And then if you take two derivatives twice, two derivatives twice, like two time derivatives and two space derivatives, 
You put those together and you have the wave equation. That's the idea that I'm getting at there. We've done it in lecture before, but if you're just like wondering what's he looking for, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Okay, it's 128. Now, I hope I haven't just freaked. I'm now worried that I freaked everybody out uh, or something, but are there other, I mean, there's two more minutes. Are we, anything else I can, I'll do this one more time. That's why I sell again if there are issues. Um, and again, I don't know. Actually, now I, I don't know what just happened in the middle of the class. I don't, if I'm yelling, it's, I'm just, just please believe me if nothing else that just, just remember going in that I'm not looking for you to do badly. I'm looking for you to do well. I'm looking for you to make it as easy as possible for me to feel that you can legitimately get an A and that neither one of us cheated by you getting an A. That's really what it comes down to. Like really, really. And I think it helps to know that. We're not on opposite sides of this, you and I, whoever you are, all of you. We just want to get legitimate A's. And that and A's come in many forms and for many reasons, like from many different directions. So, okay, I hope that, but you, like, I don't want it to be a fight. I just want us to harmoniously learn physics. Um, so are we good? Can I get some, now? Yeah. Can I get something? So, like, I think we're done. I mean, are we good? Give me a thumbs up or a good, I mean, I'm good if you're good. Are we good? Okay. Oh my God. All right. I'll accept that. I will definitely accept. Okay, cool. Thank you. Lakshmi. Okay, good. Thank you guys. All right. That helps me. Okay, good. Or, okay, all right. Oh my God. He never stopped. Okay. Fair enough. Um, um, yes. I, I challenge you all. All right. Yes. I challenge you all to get in buses and riot up to Portland, Maine. If you actually could pull that off, I guess we would all be impressed. Okay, but yes, great. You, oh my God. Okay, excellent. Um, and may the net force be with you all. Okay, cool. Okay, excellent. Excellent. I will talk to you. Have a good day. Thank you, Jalen. That helps. Thank you. Thank you, Rishi. Okay, have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good week. Yes, okay.